Good good evening, Trident family, or good afternoon, wherever you're located. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Marketing Communications Manager Daniel Sloan, and we're excited to be bringing you today's Culture of Research and Education webinar called Artificial Intelligence Impact on Learning Management Systems. The core webinar series is designed to provide faculty, students, and alumni an opportunity to share their research and scholarship with the Trident community. By fostering a culture of professional development and idea exchange, participants will have access to a valuable forum for lifelong learning. This university-wide effort is coordinated by Trident's doctoral studies directors. Just a few notes before we begin today's session. Uh, welcome to ask questions at any time. You can do that by finding the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Go about halfway down, you'll see a questions box, type the questions in there, and we'll handle all of your questions at the end of the presentation where both Dr. Lee and Dr. Gordon will be available to answer all of your questions. Uh, please try to avoid using the raise hand function. We just can't communicate with you that way. The webinar will be recorded and all attendees will receive a link to the webinar and a copy of the slides by early next week. I want to introduce today's host, Dr. Wenling Lee, who is the uh, uh, doctoral director for our PhD in Educational Leadership Program. Dr. Lee holds a PhD in Cognitive Psychology uh, from Beijing Normal University and has past doctor experience in the Department of Psychology, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Dr. Lee was senior research scientist at the Center for the Study of reading prior to Trident. Her primary research interests are reading, writing, and instructional approach in K-12 and school leadership and administration. She has authored seven books and numerous articles on dynamic issues in children's learning and language mastery. And Dr. Lee, if the internet's working okay, I'm gonna hand the floor off to you. Introduce today's presenter. Thank you, Daniel, uh, for your great introduction. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm so pleased to have such an opportunity to meet you all here. I'm very glad to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Kim Gordon. Dr. Gordon got his PhD in Educational Leadership from Trident University International. Now he is a subject matter expert on the implementation of artificial intelligence, argumented adaptive learning systems in education. He is also playing a leadership role in a couple of international projects. We are so proud of his great accomplishments in, this, in his career. I'm also so pleased that Dr. Gordon will share his experience of his learning at Trident and also his research in the area of artificial intelligence. Uh, welcome to Dr. Gordon. Uh, the floor is handed off to Dr. Gordon. Daniel, thank you for the introduction. Dr. Lee, it's always a pleasure to work with you. And for those of you that have joined us, good morning, good afternoon, and probably good evening as well. This presentation will provide an overview of the processes and the approaches that were used in the research and development of a conceptual design for an adaptive learning technology implementation model, the dissertation. We'll begin with the initial market and literature review, then follow the logic of the paper that was used along the way. And we'll also take a look at some of the research tools, some, some of the software tools that were part of the process. We will then review the enhancements made to the educational model resulting from the research itself. Uh, please note in the upper left-hand corner, there will be a breadcrumb interface that will guide you as to where we are in the presentation itself, if you have any questions. But first, one of the primary drives in my pursuit of the PhD uh, was my personal and professional interest in the use of advanced learning management systems in education and training. I've been intrigued by the rapidly changing and maturing ed tech systems that are just emerging everywhere globally. I began by trying to understand who was in the market and what services and solutions they were offering. 
I soon realized that the more advanced LMS solutions were being referred to as adaptive learning. And those at the forefront of this innovation curve were incorporating artificial intelligence within these adaptive learning systems. This list represents a very small sample of the number of companies who are expanding into this area. And by the way, the URLs for each of these are included in the reference slides at the back of this stack. If this is an area of interest, each ed tech firm has an extensive information area, including white papers and some peer reviewed documentation regarding the use of artificial intelligence in education. It's a fascinating world. Following the overall market analysis, I began a comprehensive literature review for the dissertation regarding adaptive learning technology. A few of the keywords used were simply adaptive learning, adaptive learning systems, adapting learning technology. I encourage you to do the research the same. I think you'll find the results fascinating. Once again, these have been identified in the reference slides at the back of this deck. There are a wealth of dissertations, peer review articles, academic papers regarding adaptive learning technologies. Many of these discuss the design of the adaptive learning environment and advocate a learner-centric approach in their implementation. These approaches represent the personalization abilities of the adaptive learning environment and attending to each student's individual profile, representing, therefore, highly personalized education that is solely dedicated to the success of the individual learner. It is and was of particular interest to this study that ALT, Adaptive Learning Technology, also provides a potential solution to Bloom's two sigma problem. In 1984, Benjamin Bloom studied an educational approach based upon mastery, which significantly improved the effectiveness of the teaching process. His approach delivered improvements by a factor of two standard deviations, or two sigma, in stu overall student performance. This implied that by using Bloom's approach, even an average student could outperform students who were using traditional instructor-led classrooms. Remarkable study. However, due to the significant increase in human teacher and tutor costs when using Bloom's approach, it was really never fully developed. Today, with artificial intelligence and adaptive learning technology, it is possible to revisit the effectiveness of one-to-one -one education utilizing modern AI augmented adaptive learning systems. Let's review first the traditional remote and distance learning approaches that we use today. These are all very familiar to you. Course materials are generally locked per course and broken into time release segments. Oftentimes, these segments are in strict adherence to the chapters for the textbook, which supports the class. All students are assumed to be at the same educational place at the beginning of the class. As the class progresses, all students are assumed to be progressing at the same pace as well, with graded tests along the way. And at the end of the class, it is concluded with a final or a comprehensive exam. The final evaluation is in the form of a grade, A, B, C, D, et cetera. All three of the educational models in use today are a one-to-many model in which one teacher conducts a class for a classroom full of students, also known as the sage on the stage model. The first generation of adaptive learning technology attempted to allow the individual students to progress through the materials at their own pace, allowing them to skip the materials that they already knew. Each student could bypass these materials and go straight to the course content they needed to learn. The course, however, was still locked into very rigid time constraints and was still measured, is still measured by grades. Again, this is a one teacher to a many students model. Artificial intelligence adaptive learning technology is not constrained by rigid timelines. 
the student learns at their own pace. Some students may learn in the topic in two weeks, for example. Others, two months. Who cares? What's important is that they learn the materials. There is no grading in this approach as the student gains mastery of the component of that topic they are then allowed to continue and move on. An AI, as I like to say, does not mind if it has to say the same thing a thousand times in a thousand different ways as long as the student gets it. This allows the student to explore the materials in their own personalized manner as well as follow their own curiosity. The course then can begin to look like a mind map as opposed to a rigidly structured time constrained class. This approach is a significant departure from traditional classroom of the one teacher to many students model. And instead it is a one teacher or teachers, AI ALT to one student model. This is a modern adaptation of Bloom's approach in which the student is centric to the entire learning system. The learner resides in a learner-centric environment with the instructors and AI focused solely on their personal educational success. Now, originally, I thought an interesting quantitative research study would be to measure the effectiveness of a student-centric AI ALT education environment benchmarked alongside a traditional classroom covering the same content. Following my foray into the educational sector and my initial research, however, I soon realized that ALT, if and when it was being utilized, was merely being bolted on to a traditional classroom and not focus on the individual learning needs. It was still a one teacher to many students model. It was if it was just something else to be used in the classroom, like a smart board or a Chromebook, just more tech to throw at the teacher. So this led me to the idea of developing a qualitative research model, which would propose a new educational approach that fully utilized AI ALT in a learner-centric manner and then test the conceptual design with key stakeholders in the educational arena. Leveraging the research regarding the market and the literature review, I developed a conceptual design, which would be the research centerpiece of the dissertation paper itself. This model included and enhanced Bloom's approach with artificial intelligence augmented adaptive learning technology. It also provided the learner access to experts in the field and peers who were pursuing the same educational material, and it positioned the learner dead center in a learner-centric environment. The qualitative study composed of interviews were, comp were uh, composed of the following research questions. Does the proposed conceptual design for an adaptive learning technology model meet the requirements of a student-centric model? What is the role of the human teacher? What is the role of the learner in such a model? What does the proposed conceptual design for adaptive learning technology model help? Does it help resolve Bloom's two sigma problem? How could this design impact the future of the educational setting? I think that's a question all of us should be thinking about right now, the role of AI in education and the future. My target audience were composed of four distinct groups, ed tech executives, chief executive officers, chief learning officers, uh, instructional designers, academic executives such as chancellors, provosts, deans, and higher education, looking for their long-term and short-term view. Students in traditional classroom or e-learning courses, all of them were in one teacher to many students environments. And teachers in traditional classroom or e-learning courses, also in one teacher to many students environments. Very quickly, let's take a glance at the tools that were used in the development of this research. Initially, let's talk about LinkedIn. 
Uh, I focused on connecting with a very large population in these four target groups and then extended communications to them via LinkedIn messaging asking for their interest in participation. By the way, I find LinkedIn to be a remarkably powerful tool this century uh, for business networking. So please add me as a connection uh, if you're so inclined. And once again, that material is in the reference section. I used Adobe Sign for the document control and tracking of the different documents that needed to be monitored and filed accordingly. It made it very easy to keep track of the signature process throughout the study. It's a powerful tool. If you haven't used it, I recommend it. It gives you uh, automatic notifications if you turn them on, letting you know someone signed a document, or you can put timelines on it as well so that you know that you've got documents sitting out there that need some attention. So you can, uh, as I like to say, pester somebody. I used three different communication tools. And this was entirely dependent on the circumstance. Uh, some individuals were more comfortable with uh, a straight conference call. Others wanted a Skype. Others wanted a Zoom. Each one of these allow recording of the interviews. So they were all digitally recorded unless the participant uh, who was offered an opportunity to opt out did so. In that case, then manual records were maintained. The transcribed results were proofed, I'm sorry, the digitally recorded interviews were then transcribed using an AI tool known as Otter AI. Powerful tool, play with it. The transcribed results I then proofed against the audio files for accuracy. And there are a number of these tools emerging on the marketplace. So those of you that have transcription in front of you, I encourage experimentation. I shopped around for several. There are numerous qualitative analysis tools on the market. Uh, I found Atlas TI served my purposes. I used it to analyze common, for common themes, identify reoccurring components of the interviews, and do some basic um, digital analysis, as well as trending analysis uh, as a result of that model. And then lastly, I uh, used a couple of words, uh, open source tools. One is a word cloud, because I'm a visual person. I like to see the visual results as well as the data results. And then uh, the sophistication of a spider chart is uh, remarkably powerful. In fact, I just read as an aside recently that someone is developing a three-dimensional model of a spider chart that I'm kind of anxious to play with. I'm not sure what that implies but it will be fun. After inviting close to 2,000 individuals to participate, um, I was running a little over 1% to 2% response rate. And so that didn't surprise me, but it did disappoint me. Uh, so this chart represents the final list of participants in the study, and they're coded into segments. On the left is the segment uh, themselves, so EdTech 1 through 8 higher ed one through six, students one through eight, and then teachers or professors one through eight. And on the right was their positions and responsibilities. So you can see I was fortunate. I um, actually had um, interviews with co-founders of tech labs, executive officers, chief learning officers, educational technology consultants, all the way through the dean of online technologies for university presidents, and the chief academic officer at different universities, and then most important, undergraduate, graduate students, and then the teachers, professor of fine arts, history, photography, biology, media, education, and training in education. I was actually very interested in what folks thought from an AI perspective, its impact on the fine arts. That was some interesting conversations. So to recap, the communication was managed via uh, authentication tool. Everything was digitally recorded unless they opt out. Transcribed via AI transcription service and then proof for accuracy. Analyzed using qualitative analysis software. I reviewed the data via different visualization tools. I re reduced the results 
uh, down to simple graphics for the dissertation. And then I authored in Word that meet the school requirements. The strength of their comments and primary categories were represented in a visual chart in the dissertation itself. Each reflected particular interests from their discipline's view, of course, but overall, there was some commonality. We can see that uh, on these charts. The role of the student was always a question. The role of uh, the teacher, the success of the learner, the student's emotional state, the teacher as a course, definition of the teacher, uh, the notion of educating students just in time, uh, including from the higher ed sector questions about uh, definition of what it means to be educated. Those uh, got to be interesting conversations. And the whole idea that mastery is a goal to choose and try to attain. A composite of those four segments then was boiled down into this simplified chart. Mastery was of interest. Support training for the teachers was of great concern. Administration and teachers needed a dashboard to be able to see into the interior of the AI. There was a ongoing concern about the emotional and well-being state of the learner. There was a recognition that collaboration was of indeed great importance. Socialization was an issue that ticked quite often. And then the idea of the role of that teacher with this in, within this environment and the role of the student within these environments would also change significantly and so needed to have a great deal of attention paid to them. These new components were added to the conceptual design model and other elements were then enhanced based upon the results of the research. Let's briefly look at these components. We have the learner. The learner is dead center to the environment. All personalization occurs through the adaptive learning technology layer. This layer's data is absolutely key to all transactions with that individual. Component number two, the human educator or educators. There is a, a growing recognition that there may be multiple educators in this primary role that move in and out or work cooperatively and simultaneously with that one learner in assisting them in achieving success. They are focused solely on the individual learner's needs. These instructor or instructors can be within physical proximity or they may be virtually remote. Component number three, the dedicated AI is focused on supporting the human educator and tailoring content, brokering communications, managing the support systems, and updating all of the data systems that need to be informed of any and all transactions. The system supports both the instructor, the learner, and every one of the other boxes that are outside of its individual dictate for that individual learner. Component number four, the mastery engine. Mastery engine is a concept that I've bumped into often during my research. There is a idea that there needs to be a common uh, educational content repository which contains all of the measurement system, all the mastery thresholds, all the support content that is continuously updated and continuously peer reviewed. Uh, the day of the printed textbook has been gone for a long time, but this certainly brings that front and center. Component number five, subject matter educational experts. This is an acronym of my invention, S-M-E-E-S. -E -E uh, I envisioned a subject matter expert who was versed and trained in the appropriate mechanisms of educational models um, and how to approach students in order to encourage them 
excite them and enthuse them in some of the areas that the subject matter experts could provide tremendous amount of support. The idea is that the human educators in point two facilitate the relationship with the learner, but sometimes things are happening so quickly that you need subject matter experts to come in and uh, attend to some of the more granular detail as we move forward. All this expertise can be delivered on demand and as required. Component number six. This component provides teacher support and training systems, administration tools, legal guardian access where appropriate, overall quality assurance and control, fidelity monitoring. This is where the heavy lifting occurs so that uh, all of our reports showing progress, achievement, and anything that we need to pay attention to to improve the system will reside here where we can plug into it remotely and externally. An empathy model, this was a direct result of the dissertation. This is composed of monitoring and reporting systems that provide insight into the learner's emotional and physical well-being. That was a common theme with students and it was a common theme with instructors, that there was a grave concern about basic questions such as, how are they doing? So in this scenario, the system kind of pays attention to that and then flags any needs for intervention, human intervention as required. Component eight, the need for the ability to work well with others and collaborate on initiatives is a increasingly important in the 21st century. I hear it all the time from the outside the education community that if we need to be providing talent that knows how to work with others, play well with others is actually the phrase I hear often. This component will coordinate that collaboration between peers and other researchers around the globe who are all exploring the same chain of thought, the same level of interest, the same view of curiosity. And finally, component nine was also a common theme. There's a need for a socialization component, a variety of social needs, including civic responsibilities, cultural sensitivities, media literacy, empathy, civility, all are part of this component. Now, I'm going to pause here just for a second because I want to make it very clear that many of the activities of these boxes do not require that learner to be confined and have a monitor glued to the top of their head. This is a comprehensive approach in which the learning, excuse me, adaptive learning technology layer is helping coordinate a wide variety of exercises and applications, and many of those should be, could be, uh, well outside any kind of a boxed environment, uh, specifically the socialization componentry. Uh, the collaboration universe really requires some human-to-human -human participation, even if that's only virtual. It really requires eye-to-eye -eye contact. So there is a large number of opportunities in this model to marry the virtual world, the augmented world, and the reality of the world all together into a comprehensive educational approach in which the AI is the center of the universe. So in conclusion, artificial intelligence, when combined with human abilities, can substantially change the dynamics of the education environment. It can change it from a one teacher to one to many students model to a one human educator or educators, artificial intelligence ALT to one student deployment. A traditional classroom, regardless of how we deploy it, traditional e-learning, whatever it may be, cannot provide this level of personalization. 
things are happening fast. Everything is now personalized. Think about your daily life. Anything you interact with, you are now expecting to have a one-to-one -one relationship with you. Your banking systems, Google, Facebook, if you use it, Amazon, LinkedIn, even your cars are beginning to know who we are and how we behave. So since we now are beginning as a society to expect these one-to-one -one interactions, then we need to start looking at an educational model that also mirrors those one-to-one -one expectations. The educational model has served us well, but it served us for a previous age, a mass-produced age of one-to-many. It's time to rethink how we deliver education. I believe it is time to provide one-to-one -one education to support every learner's success and artificial intelligence and adaptive learning technology can help us accomplish that goal. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gordon, for the great presentation about um, artificial intelligence impacts on learning management system. And also, you know, you shared on the process of your dissertation study, uh, a lot of tools you mentioned, uh, I believe those are very helpful for all the students in the doctoral programs. Um, you know, this presentation helps our students to prepare the dissertation study. Um, really appreciate uh, your presentation. So now let's give back the floor to Daniel for Q&A session. Great. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you, Gordon. And yeah, Dr. Lee is absolutely right. We, you know, we do, we've been doing these webinars for six, seven years at this point, and oftentimes people come with very general questions about their dissertation. So breaking it down like that is extremely beneficial for students in the audience. Uh, Dr. Gordon, first question is for you, uh, and it starts out with a statement, love this conceptual design. And the question is, what age groups or learning levels do you think this model would work best for? Well, it is, we're talking about a uh, basically a shift of the cultural environment of how education actually works. So I'll give you two scenarios. In a perfect world, immediately right out of the gate, we begin supporting individual children and uh, really begin to nurture and engage them with their curiosity with a system that can support anything that they happen to be questioning. Uh, I think realistically, as we roll out over the next, oh, it'd be nice within five years, um, we're gonna see a lot happening at the university sector and then slowly but surely back its way into the, the K through 12 marketplace. It's all conjecture, but that's kind of how I think it's gonna happen. Great, thank you, Dr. Gordon. And next question also for you. Are there, do you foresee there being any dangers or detriments to making things too personalized for students, especially younger students? Well, that's why I um, was very attentive to the idea of the collaboration environments and the socialization environments. So there, there is a risk, no doubt. Um, everything that we do in education is a risk, but uh, there is a risk that you could isolate that student, and that's not the intent here. The, the intent is to provide that student and that learner with all the tools they knew, need, including social tools and collaboration tools and cooperation tools. It's gonna take a lot of work. Great, thank you. And. Uh, next question uh, for you is, how did you go about selecting these specific people you wanted to interview in the qualitative portion of your research? I certainly wanted the uh, administration, the higher executive administration in uh, universities. Definitely, they were my target. Uh, and then uh, certainly teachers. And then no doubt students. And then certainly I needed to understand a little bit more about the vision that was uh, beginning to mature in the ed tech community itself. And uh, I could speak at length about that. That's a fascinating arena. Um, 
I'll comment it very briefly. If anybody wants to discuss it further, I'd be happy to offline. But uh, there is a growing momentum of technology companies that are rapidly maturing some of these tool sets including evaluating how to monitor and manage the ethics of the AI within an educational sector. And many of these forums that I'm attending and participating in have few, uh, if any, academics and educators involved. And that's an area I think that uh, needs to change pretty darn quickly because uh, this is, after all, education at its core. It's not a technology solution. Thank you. And got a couple more questions. And for those of you who do have questions, a reminder, you can send those in on the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, next question. This one is, is also for Dr. Gordon, but I'm going to, after he answers it, I'm going to spin it a bit and, at, and also ask it to Dr. Lee. But uh, Dr. Gordon, where do you see the research you did for your dissertation going next? Are there a couple avenues? that you would really like to take it uh there's two parts to that question one is me personally and the second is additional research that i think needs to be done uh, i'll start with the latter uh, i believe that there are plenty of qualitative studies that need to occur now uh, regarding the use and application of artificial intelligence adaptive learning technology in an actual institution and one of those could be, because I personally bumped into it, identifying the rationale behind the resistance to the idea, because there is resistance to it. Uh, I also think that once a prototype has been built, that that original dissertation that I anticipated where I wanted to benchmark the system, a functioning system versus a traditional system uh, should definitely be put in place. So that takes me to the first part of my response. And where I'm going with this right now is I am actively and seriously pursuing the development of that prototype and wish me luck because that simple sentence just cost a heck of a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you. And Dr. Lee, to put a little spin on that question, given your familiarity with Dr. Gordon's research, as an educator, where do you see uh, a logical next step with this research? Yeah, like in recent years, you know, online learning is a really hot topic. Uh, so like uh, just in the PhD education program, you know, many students are interested in the online learning. Uh, so we do have a lot of dissertations related to like comparing traditional with the online learning or like some study like Dr. Gordon did, you know, just discuss or, you know, like research about, you know, the future learning system, um, you know, what technology will apply um, or how to evaluate online learning. Uh, a lot of related topic, um, very interested. Uh, I think it's also still many, many research uh, we need to do in this direction. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, and let's see, Doc, Dr. Gordon, next question is for you. And uh, question is, you know, I'm an educator and I have to say I'm a little embarrassed, but I do not know a lot about AI. Are there areas that you would direct me to, such as websites, journals, for me to get a good start in understanding how AI relates to education? Uh, two two answers there, and, and uh, remind me again, uh, Daniel. Do you distribute this deck, or is the deck available to anybody that may want a copy of it? The, the the deck will be sent out to everyone who has registered for the webinar. Okay, so at the back end of the deck, you will find a number of uh, references that I suggest that you uh, you pursue, uh, especially the ed tech companies that are in the area of education and AI. Most of them have a lot of white papers. Uh, some peer reviewed, some of them obviously marketing, but it's a tremendous amount of information that's uh, generally well 
depict it because they're, they're trying to sell stuff, right? But I think it's a great place just to get an idea of who's doing what and what it all means. And then uh, the very last uh, reference slide in this deck. Um, well, do you, Daniel, do you mind if I advance from here? Yeah, I guess, yeah, we can show the appendix now and then scan back. I, yeah, I can come back. So uh, these are the AI, ALT companies that are in the deck. There's lots more, just do a Google search. Uh, here are the literature review references. I would pursue those, but most importantly, a lot's been going on in the last couple of years. So I would also go do your own independent research. And once again, use the, the taglines, adaptive learning, artificial intelligence and education, those kind of terms. You'll be astonished at how much material is generated in the last handful of years. And then uh, these organizations. Now these are very technical in nature other than EDUCAUSE. So, but certainly the IEEE, the Association for Computing Machinery, uh, EDUCAUSE, if uh, you're not a member, uh, student membership isn't too bad. And then the last link is my Adaptive Learning Technology Reengineering Group on LinkedIn itself. You're welcome to join. Uh, I think we are at the stage of this technology and these implementations that the more hands on deck, and regardless of whether you're just now showing up to the party or you've been here for a while, I think we're going to need every educator that we can convince that this is important to get involved and help us design a system that works well and not just has a nice interface. I'll go back to where we were. Okay, great. And then we do uh, another comment from the audience, a suggestion, AI for anyone is a great site, great site to generically understand AI. I agree. And I, and I will actually share that link with the audience. So look for it in the chat box in just a second. Um, yeah, but thank you for sharing that. And then last question, I'm gonna end with Dr. Lee. Uh, I believe you mentioned that other PhD students have researched similar topics. Is that, if that's true, is there a, a way to see some of that research for anyone who's interested in that? Uh, yes, you know, like uh, in the um, Trident library, uh, if you go to, you know, like dissertation database, uh, and also you can type some keywords there to search Trident dissertation or online learning, learning management system, uh, you can find some published dissertations there. Okay. Great, and yeah, yeah, perhaps we can send around some suggestions in the follow-up email next week as well. So, thank, I really thank you everyone uh, for your contributions uh, tonight, and thank you, yeah, and thank you for participating in this this core webinar. Uh, on the screen now, you should see the link to the core web page. You can access our past core webinars and other doctor resources from Trident. Uh, thank you for everyone's participation, interest, and really great qu questions and suggestions. Uh, and we're going to close the session with final remarks, starting with Dr. Gordon and Dr. Lee. Thank you, everyone. I uh, am convinced that we live in remarkable times. Uh, the impact of AI hasn't even been a firecracker to where I think all of this is going to take us as, as a society. Uh, and I, I would recommend, I would encourage anyone that wants to get involved, at least stay on top of the topic. And lastly, I would love uh, to be connected. So if you have an interest and you wanna talk, you'll find my LinkedIn and my email address, and I'm actually up to my eyeballs in text and WhatsApp as well. I'd uh, love to hear from you. I, I want to know what people are thinking. These are going to be fascinating times in the next 10 years. And I believe it uh, looks like we may have lost Dr. Lee. But again, thank you everyone for your participation tonight, your great questions, great con contributions. And we'll see you at our next core webinar, which will be June 17th. And we'll be sending out information on that very soon. 
Thanks a lot and have a great evening. Good evening to everybody.